E hello, ya tubs that are cause here back with another full game ranked commentary. In this game, I was playing Udir in the jungle, and I've been playing him quite a lot. Therefore, I haven't really uploaded a game of me playing him in the jungle, so I wanted to share with you one of the games that I did. This game was on stream. Um, as you can see, when I joined the game, I muted everybody. I was having a pretty nasty day when it comes to my Q team ups. Uh, I ha I've been playing with a lot of salty people and therefore I just muted them. Something you guys should always do if you see that people are just way too toxic. Just go on and mute everybody and play out your game. Now in this game of Woody, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, some rotations and split pushing and all of that. Um, since that's one of the strong components of uh, Udir, if you know what you're doing. Um, starting here with the blue, I'm going to just clear the first couple of camps and actually get my Hunter's Potion so I can get the sustain for the rest of the jungle, for the rest of the game. I did change the runes in this game, was experimenting a little bit and therefore you're gonna see something really silly happening to me, but it's okay, it's not a big deal. Um, Basically, I'm just going to die in the next camp. I wanted to test it out and I just die here. But like I said, it's not a big deal if you think about it. Going back takes you 8 seconds. My dead timer is of 15, so it's not that big of a difference. I didn't lose my buff. I just end up messing up 6 seconds in the process. But like I said, it's not that big of an issue. Let's ignore the fact that happened, I was experimenting, I was hoping I could do that camp, but it looks like I couldn't, and that's something I'm not doing this time around. Now I see Quinn there getting ganked, they get the first blood, it's really easy with the perma slows um, between Nuno's E and Mundo's Cleave, but all okay, I do my red buff, I like to at least get a full complete jungle clear. And as you can see, I always pick up a pink the first time I go B, but I see that Mundo stayed in top lane, therefore I decide to go there. With the red I can easily slow him, I got my Phoenix stance at level 2, it's quite a lot of damage actually. Mundo not really having any good escape mechanism other than just cleaving my ass, but I'm Woodier. I ended up flashing there to secure the kill, and now Quinn has a full laning phase free. Not, not a full landing phase, but at least he has two waves of farm without having any pressure from Dr. Mundo. And getting the experience, Mundo is in that way losing. A little bit of greedy overstay there by, by Mundo, so yeah. Uh, grabbing the movement speed buff, uh, the movement speed boots here. Uh, I believe this was before the nerf, they were cheaper now at this game. Now it's 900 the total, but still. Sometimes I keep doing this, the movement speed buff of the boots is insane as a Udyr player. At this, type of the, at this time of the game, 6 minutes in, most people don't even have level 1 boots. So imagine when you go to gank a lane with these boots plus your movement speed of the E and overall my mastery and runes, I have insane movement speed advantage over them. Look Diana with roughly 300 movement speed and me just ganking her with 4 426 base movement speed without my E buff. So yeah, it's really good to gank early in the game since you don't have a close gap per se, the extra movement speed above your enemy will help you indeed. <clears throat> Now, continue to clear the wave as you can see using my Hunter Potion every time I can. Here's us coming for the save. Saved Quinn really at the last second. We tried to fight him off. Quinn there playing a pretty dangerous game. So we just decide to back up. I'm okay, Nunu just wasted the ultimate. But if I had more mana, I would have fighted them. But I didn't have mana to compete against them like that and therefore I didn't want to risk it. There is no point on going to give them kills for no good reason. As long as I keep farmed and the uh, XP advantage, the gameplay I do with Udyr, I'm doing fine. Now again, Mundo with the overstay, he didn't learn the first time, Quinn already level 6, just ultis, meet sims and get the kill. Now doing the blue buff here, I don't think I give this blue buff to Ari. Uh, I like I mean, depends. If I see he either has a really hard lane, but he is doing okay, for example, not just dying, 
I give him the blue buff to help him out a little bit or if he is stomping I may as well give him the blue buff so he snowballs even harder but in a regular basis I will keep the couple first of blue buffs later on in the game I don't really carry for now I want it and they help me out a lot now Diana tried to go down there but we have vision on her so I go in try to fight her I saw Nuno coming as well but my team is coming to help me out I just stun and try to do a little bit of damage but I don't go way to win Diana they're scared of seeing all my team Irie and Blitzcrank uh, arriving and me with full HP there stealing also the red she did indeed the right decision of not coming in now she went to the lane and that is something really silly guys she did she saw she knew it's not just that she saw us but she knew me and my team were at the red buff and she decides okay they are in three guys are in my jungle i'm going to lane that is a very bad decision and very risky so of course my team chases her all the way into our red and i end up just meeting up with her in her only escape uh, way now I was already ready to go around the corner there because it looks like she wanted to flash. Maybe she saw it would, wouldn't be useful for her at all. So she tried to grab a kill on Ari, which she didn't. Now continuing my jungle pad and all, keep clearing all, all I can. And of course, always try to stick my head into the enemy jungle when I'm doing pretty well at least normally okay I always steal the jungle and if I have the smite up I will smite the wolves because it's going to give us vision of the enemy jungle whenever he is in the top lane in the top jungle now we are going for a, a gank seeing if Moon had wards he didn't he flashed Quinn went in cc'd him a little bit I went and stunned him as well I'm tanky enough to tank a little bit the tower hits and therefore I just continue now here I do take the minions off from Quinn this will make it so that the tower most certainly will fall there is no minions coming from the enemy team to stop ours and well I'm Woodier I want to farm overall I'm playing in a team game but I want to get big myself so I can just go split pushing and 1v2 easily something that you will be seeing pretty soon in this matchup in this game you'll see a crazy 1v2 that I feel kind of proud about uh, anyway continuing to farm up always clear everything I can if I see wards I take the wards scuttle crabs as always I like to strongly recommend you to always get the scuttle crabs they are very important they help out not only because of the movement speed buff but about thanks to the vision they give that cannot be removed now here we go for a dive I really don't care but then everybody appears so I decide just to run away and yeah that's the best option let's crank sadly dying there everybody was there and here is one of the options. I see that everyone is in the mid lane and we will never be able to defend that tower against the entire team but Corky is split pushing bot therefore I decide to split push top they have to decide they have to send someone for Corky they have to send someone for me and if you look at it if they send two guys for us all their pushing potential in mid lane is basically lost and most likely they had to send strong people for me and for Corky, especially at least for me because killing me is a pain in the ass and thanks to that we ended the pressure imagine if i stayed there defending mid they would take the tower most likely maybe we would engage or get engaged and maybe we would all die and get aced and most likely that would make it so they they would take two towers yeah um so it's all about the timing when you decide to go to push the lanes and which lane you decide to push you can't just perma split push that is insane and that is stupid and i do not recommend you to just split push all the time no you have times where you need to help your team you have times where you need to just farm up you're not there is no point on just keep split pushing if you have your buffs up for example you see here i came back and I'm doing all the camps and of course taking the buffs and Quen no that is my red anyway now one thing that happens a lot in solo queue is that people don't know what to do 
it comes to mid late game people don't know what they should be doing they lose a lot of time just walking around maybe get a, kill, a couple of cs and go back and that when you are winning that gives the enemy team time to come back to the game so you need to be proactive you need to do something about the game and push it even further in your advantage sometimes you don't even need your team to actually do something directly because what you do will lead to other events and therefore your team will be forced to react the way you predict that they do sometimes they do not now for example here they were competing over the rift herald zone and i alone just decided to come bot and split push with zz rot and of course uh, Janna and this Jinx at level 10 has no chance. As you can see, I am over leveling everybody. I'm level 13 at the moment. And I see my team is there doing Rift Herald. Why can't they do it? They sent two people down because I was split pushing. So, and Corky stayed behind and me and him just ended up killing Janna as well. And what, what this does overall is they have to send people for you. And most likely if you did your game correctly, one guy alone is not enough to stop you, so they have to send two. By sending two you are giving the odds in the favor of your team by making them stay four against three in most cases. Of course not always this happens, but it does happen. Now sometimes you may even sacrifice an objective or a team fight for a greater good. For example, I would not mind sacrificing a drake if it was for example the first drake of the enemy team or the second and in the trade get an inhibitor open for my team you know and that's all the point now here i don't know if you noticed i stole quite a lot of the buffs of the enemy team it's something that I keep doing here I end up getting the blue for myself again because I was running low on mana and I want to keep the pressure up now look at this my team is basically all here and they are all there stationary defending I know there is no point of me staying there so I just go bot lane why because I'm fast as hell I stunned their Nuno so the ultimate channel was stopped Nuno has no damage to stop me so I just keep pushing the tower the enemy team decided they wanted to fight my team and therefore they're not here to defend it i did not take the tower sadly but i did do quite a lot of damage but if you notice nuno wasn't able to defend alone so they sent jinx see what happens now they lost their ad carry and their jungler and therefore my team ended up turning it around and killing diana again they keep pushing top mundo is there to stop them uh, our mid lane was pushed against them, so Jinx and Nunu went there to clear it. Don't know why they went both together, but yeah, they went top because they, my team was pushing top hard. Here I am again. Now Diana tries to stop me. I know that I can take the tower before I even trying to fight her, therefore I try to fight her. As a Udir, what you want to do as well is just start with your stun if you can, go to your Phoenix Stance to do the damage, try to get at least the proc of your Phoenix Stance out on the fourth attack and then change to turtle and once you get your stun up again normally the stun debuff of the enemy team is done and well you stun the guy again and you do the same rotation phoenix dance turtle stun and you try to go with that uh you saw me there unmuting everybody at this point i was pretty safe that the game was doing was going okay and that i did okay so i don't, didn't expect flame and of course communication is something important and since this didn't look like it, a flammable game i ended up unmuting here trying to hold both of them nuna channels there quinn stops the channel and it ends up forcing the flash dr mundo here alone may be tanky but not against the entire team sadly for him <clears throat> sorry guys now a lot of gold there as you can see i have four five thousand gold it's important to go back b <laughs> insta trinity force holy crap i mean even if i have the level advantage and overall i should be ahead if i don't spend that amount of gold i'm not really capitalizing on my advantage i need to use the gold all the gold i can in a productive way to even stomp harder now what I really want to show you with this game is as you can see i'm not really going insane on ganks in this game i'm not that pr that is my blue <laughs> i'm not really that present in team fights look at me just fighting both of them but yeah 
go around, juke a little bit, all okay, go back in, they ward, and I continue to push. But it's all about map management, lane control, and overall dominance of objectives. I've been taking all the buffs, I've been taking jungle, I have been taking drakes. I'm over. Look at Dr. Mundo's level. Did he hit 15 now? 14 now, and I'm 15 already, going for 16. And the farm is for a jungle, I think it's okay. 180 at 28 minutes. I mean, it's not insane, but it's above the average of what junglers do. Now here I continue pushing, they were fighting in the bot lane, remember that the tower is down, my team can easily just pressure there for the inib, and here comes the fight I wanted to show you. It's Nuno and X Mundo, two tanky guys. See how I do the rotation now in real time? I, I try to rotate stun them, use my phoenix stance to burst out the damage and then turtle to be tankier and lifesteal a little bit. It's important that I am always moving to shard drop my Ludens echo, that is a big part of my burst. And then as you can see I always rotate with the stuns. I'm focusing mainly Mundo here because his slow is a pain in the ass and of course he was also easier to kill. After all that. I decided to go back, I lost a lot, but yeah, it was me against two of the tanks and it ended up pretty okay. Uh, <clears throat> now again, remember, if you have buffs up, if you have uh, a jungle, clear it if you can't really do a lot more during that time, it's also important, don't just ignore the jungle for the rest of the game just because you opened the tower, the buffs are important, as you can see I used quite a lot of mana here with this build and overall with the aggressive play I've been doing but yeah again with almost 3k gold you saw I wanted to go back to B and I stopped my port just to get scuttle crab and of course yeah the gold there for more mortis but that to reinforce that scuttle crab is indeed a important uh, neutral monster to kill now again Drake is gonna be up I timed it, I went back to B, I buy it and I'm immediately here to do the Drake. Uh, the enemy team at this point sadly is way behind, it's 624, but I don't know if they really could do much more after this. We have the side lanes open to go in, my team ended up snowballing with me at this point, again taking all the buffs I can, the enemy team really behind. I don't know if they tried to contest it here, I don't remember, but it seems like they came. I ended up staying alone at Baron, because first of all I knew I could do the damage needed for it, and I was way above Nuno, so my smite was stronger. Now here I just ignore this lane, chase a little bit after Janna, but no point, no need. Now with the Baron buff we just do the end, the last push and we win the game. Hope you guys enjoy it, if you do remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you want to say something and remember to subscribe if you're not. Thank you for watching and I'll be pretty soon back with a new one! See ya!